press the wrong button. I'm so sorry. Not a great plan. As a viewer of AEW, y'all had to know these ratings were not going to be that good. Um, <laughs> let me tell you something. I want people to understand this. When a guy like a Jim Cornette, Vince Russo, and Eric Bischoff keep telling you, keep saying to you, there's a problem. Hey, the booking's not right. This, that, and the third. I watched one person's video. I won't say his name. I'm not trying to... Put him on blast. Don't have time for it. Um, he keeps stating that the booking is for those three guys, most like Jim Cornette and uh, Vince Russo, are seventies and nineties. But say what you want about Jim Cornette's booking. Say what you want about Vince Russo. Vince Russo booking. These people have successes. Now, granted, they might need somebody a little bit more with the times to kind of reel them in and say, we, well, we can't do that today because that's offensive or we can't do that today because that's not going to work. And that's fine. But don't dis dismiss them as old people who are out of touch. They know what they've been talking about. Vince Russo and Jim Cornette don't like each other. How the fuck they don't like each other, but they echoing the same thing, the same thing. You look at these ratings, and this and, and it's been dwindling. Don't say AEW ratings have been up here. They've been dwindling ever since God knows what. What, March, February? And we has hit the, the peak of the dwindling. 500,000 is not good. Say what you want about it. These excuses of, of Juneteenth, these excuses of... Kendrick Lamar's concert, these excuses, these excuses, there's no reason for that rating to be that low. However, should it be low? Yes. Do I think they were going to get 700,000? No, but not 500,000. Clearly, something happened. There's a disconnect. The Young Bucks, the Elite versus AEW storyline, whatever you want to call it, is not working because the Bucks don't come off as legit threats to the company especially when they're avps when they did this a couple years ago with kenny omega as a top heel and they were his goons it worked because you look at kenny omega he looks like a legit star that you will follow behind or a guy that will take over the company because he's a legit main eventer these two guys are not main eventer they are ratings killers but they're not main eventer and you got that going on you had mjf return which i thought that was half-assed they should have Saved it for the pay-per-view. He should have just cut promos because that looks bad on MJF, <laughs> if you ask me. You got Swerve Strickland, who looks inferior to everybody else on the product. I mean, you watch NXT. They have more black champions than I've ever seen in my life in WWE right now. And when you watch NXT, that's Trick Williams' show. That's his show. When you watch AEW, it's Will Ospreay. It might be MJF next week, but it's Will Ospreay this week. It's MJF next week. It's the one to be uh, NWO, the Bucks. I have not seen, ever since Swerve won that world championship, he has not had his own show. It doesn't feel like his show. And it doesn't because the booking has been atrocious for him. And this is me watching as a casual. I don't even watch this shit on a weekly basis. I can tell it's been bullshit. And then you have other people coming out saying the ratings don't matter no more. The rating, They do matter when the numbers are that low. Hell, the person, one person said, and I remember, he was like, oh, the YouTube numbers matter. They're low, too. They're the lowest they've been. Not, there ain't too many videos that get over a million views anymore. AEW is not hot. Nobody cares about the product no more because they're not working. They're working with people that we've seen already. We've seen it, uh, New Japan. You have purged all New Japan talent that there's no talent left for you to have a like fantasy booking match with. You got Okada. You got Will Ospreay. You got this person. You got Jay White. They have done nothing with this man.
CML. Who cares? You had them on the show. And you've been having them as a revolving door that now the forbidden door concept is it's just a concept. It's like the hell in the cell every year. It, it means it's meaningless now. The concept should have been a forbidden door. Year one, New Japan. Year two, Noah. Year three, TNA. Year four, um, M MLW. Year five, New Japan and Noah. You, and you should have had that crossover brand. That's what it's supposed to be. Similar to how they did with uh, ROH and uh, Final Wars or Golf Wars or what they, what ROH used to do with New Japan. Sim, similar to that. But you you take that concept and you spin it and you do it with all promotions. But Tony Khan, he could have done that. He chose not to. Hell, I, I mean, it, it, it's laughable at best. It's laughable at best. Because now TNA is working with NXT and NXT is benefiting from it. They're the hottest thing right now. People are talking about NXT more than they talk about AEW. In 2024, did you really think a developmental brand would be more talked about than, than, than AEW? Does it help that they lost Cody Rhodes? No, that's Tony Khan's fault. Does it help they lost CM Punk? No, that's a Tony Khan's fault. The, the decision that Tony Khan is making is doing more harm to the company than good. And then I get these people all the time saying, well, I like the product. You can like the product, but you need to call it out. Lately, I've been seeing more people calling it out now. Those defenders, they're dwindling because now they see the bullshit they did. When they aired that CM Punk footage with Jack Perry was the worst thing they ever did. Who asked for that? And CM Punk, it pretty much vindicated what CM Punk said. He, everything he said in the interview was in that video. And it backfired so fast that he took it down. Because they knew they fucked up. But Tony Khan is a reactionary person. He doesn't admit, yeah, that wasn't a good idea. Admit to your mistakes. You got Dave Meltzer saying, oh yeah, well this was good, this was good. And then he wants to come out and say, well this rating wasn't good. No shit, Sherlock. You keep telling them the book matches and not stories. We are in the era now of storytelling. Good storytelling. Good booking. AEW storytelling is horrendous. It is not good. And I don't think it ever will be good again. When you got Tony Khan with his crazy looking self, not listening to the criticism, the critique, the right criticism. It's okay to, to listen to the criticism, but listen to the, the criticism that is helpful, not bad. And that's where we are now with with, with AEW. Do I think AEW will go back to what they used to be? No. Too much time has passed. You have let good talent go. You kept Jack Perry over CM Punk. You listened to the Bucks over CM Punk. And CM Punk is now what Punk is saying is coming to fruition. It's actually becoming true. And that's the worst thing about it. It's getting worse. The more Punk, what he said in that... Um, the Hawani interview is it's becoming true. <laughs> they are not here to book for the casuals, and then I try to get the casuals. Tony Khan said he books for the sickos. Well, guess what? Those sickos didn't show up, did they? Keep on booking for those sickos, and you're going to lose more and more viewership. When it comes to television, you need to make a compelling television show. Vince Russo has a lot of issues. But when it came to writing compelling television, he did do that. Was it good? Not all the time. But I'll take what the hell he gave me than what AEW's doing. You have to learn and you have to grow. You can't keep booking like this. People going back from heels to faces like that. I mean, my God, makes the Big Show at Big Show look like he was the best uh, uh, swisher. There's no purpose no more. I'll take something that Solomon said long ago. I book for an audience. He booked for the audience of one. And that's where we are now. Tony Khan books for an audience of one. Himself. Vince did it. Tony Khan's doing it now. Triple H, he books for himself a little bit. But he also has his hand on the post. He knows what fans want. He knows what people want. And I think that's the thing that's different from a Triple H than a Tony Khan. 
He's been in the trenches. He's actually laced off the boots. So he knows what works and doesn't work. Tony does not. Writing a piece of paper, having two guys, fantasy book. That's not, that's not booking. Get some help. Get somebody to help you with this and make this company great. Ever since Kenny Omega, Young Mucks, and Cody Rhodes lost their power of creative, this company's went to shit. But you could tell who ran the main event creative, Cody Rhodes. You could tell who ran the tag team creative, the Bucks. And Kenny ran in the women's division. I'll even take Kenny Omega's women division over the shit we're getting now. The only good is grace is Tony Storm, but that's not a, a, a fucking a Tony Khan booking. That's a Tony Storm making this character and making it unique at what it is. The tag team division is horrendous. Ever since the Bucks lost power to that, it's been horrendous. And I'll give, I'll give the devils they do. They book that tag team division like wonders. I have never seen a Taddy Division book that well since, since the early uh, 2000s with the Team 3D and Edge Christian. They did great stuff. They listened to, they must have listened to somebody, but they booked it right and they knew. And the funny thing about it too, when they booked it, they wasn't in the main event either. They knew, like, we can't book and be in the main event. Their, their goal was focusing on making the Taddy Division the best division in AEW. And it literally it was for a point. Because the, the world title division, all they had was Heyman, John Moxley, and Cody at the time, and that was it. But they booked a great division. Now look at the division. It's horrendous. So I can go on and on talking about this, guys, but that's my thoughts on it. As always, guys, like, subscribe, peace, have a Johnson day. You tell me, God, below what you guys think. Johnson is out.